In the bottom right side, we got ourselves a blue Zerg player. He is uh, fighting for the dragons, the phoenix, and the game is he is rogue. So up left side, the red Brodos, he is farting. This tournament is sponsored by Matcharino. Just adding the code down below. You support us to bring you more content like this. Alright. Look at that. Immediately, like, six Liquipedia people just like, That's right! That's right! We're on the case! <laughs> we got this. No problem, guys. Don't worry about it. Liquipedia is our... Just shared overall diary of StarCraft 2 in a way, isn't it? We just don't open up every Liquipedia page which Dear Diary, today we had the Trofo Weekly. Rogue did really good against, well, uh, Dream. And uh, Parting managed to do the same against Innovation. Remarkably, how they both kind of wound up in the same similar situation. Winning the first game, losing the second, and then just kind of beating the score back with two points in a row. You're editing? <laughs> oh, nice. It was quite surprising to see Rogue moving up as smoothly as he did. Sometimes people do think that he's not going to win the small tournaments, but leaving Jin Air Green Wings obviously put quite a bit of a stir in his uh, overall willingness to, to try his best at everything he does. Maybe, perhaps, who knows. Only he can say. Sight notes. Maybe we should ask him at some point. And then, parentheses. Does he even know English? How good is this English? We should ask somebody else before we ask him. Rogues on Dragon Phoenix Gamers? That's right! That's right! Jinnah Greenwings disbanded earlier yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is, uh, it's not a fun thing, is it? It's not a fun thing. It definitely isn't. Kind of sad. Disappointing. Overall, it's not the greatest thing. I thought Team Envy took him. No, Team Envy took a lot of other players. They took, uh, I think, was it Maru? Was it Creator as well? I think Creator as well. And then somebody else? SOS. SOS, right. Why didn't they get Trap? It seems so weird, right? Overall... Trap, best brodels in the in the game. Corona, yeah. It's the big old big bad Coco Wolf. You remember Rogue did an interview in English in Pro League days. Ah, interesting, interesting. I hope he still talked some English at some point. Alright. Trap would be hired by Team Liquid. Oh, that would be something, wouldn't it? That would quite be something. Are there even any Korean players on Team Liquid right now for StarCraft? Oh, wait. Um, Tasia? Is Tasia still on Team Liquid? Is Tasia still playing? I'm sorry, I don't see him very often in our cups. Not sure if we just don't have a line of communication to him, actually, but... The Terran guy? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it's Asia. Alright. Yeah, Team Liquid does seem to have a bit more favoritism towards Terrans, in a way, doesn't... Don't they? Don't they? Just a little bit, perhaps. Just a little bit, perhaps. Is 
fascia, you thermal, and crank. Oh yeah, cranks on there as well right now. He's not really a player though, is he? Yeah, crank recently joined Team Liquid as well. Um, by the way, a lot of adept stuff is happening here. I'm trying to just kind of show you guys. But oh, there they go into the drone line. The Zergling's completely out of position, actually, to <laughs> anticipating the movement towards the main base. Six workers go down. More adepts into the main base here as well. The Queen's busy trying to get rid of that War Prism. That War Prism, of course, key to making stuff like this keep going for a longer time. Just a lot of work is going down, though, here. The Nexus full parting did take quite a beating as well, though. Seisha is on hiatus right now, dealing with health issues. Ooh, ish. Said it will be back in, uh, for, well, for Codes in 2021. Interesting. Interesting indeed. You guys ever wondered about like just overall if there was like a hundred years ago if you were allowed to go back a hundred years ago and you'd have to explain the entire concept of esports in starcraft 2 and how it became to be a thing and like overall how korean dominance and the entire thing right that would be that would be quite something <laughs> that would be quite something uh difficult to do i would say anyway <laughs> i don't know why that suddenly pops in my mind I was just like, huh, how would I go about doing that? That would be weird. Anyway, you know, sometimes sometimes you got to ask the hard questions, the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> uh, all right, Rogue. Rogue, he has been going for the Road Warren a lot lately. He's, uh, he's doubling down here against the Protoss as well. It's a bit more common, I suppose. Has the Infestation Pits and the Hydra Den here on the way as well. Most likely will be a transition into the Lurkers at some point once more. As he did take quite a beating, of course. 18 workers did get uh, killed off. Will be hard to even explain mainstream sports like soccer and basketball. Well, you they already had uh, soccer and, well, football. Right? For a long time. It's been around for a long time. Hold up, hold up guys, there's some nice force fields going down here, parting. Is he gonna start wrecking some face here? Is he gonna do some serious damage uh, with this nerd rage that has been activated within himself? Oh, there we go, okay, that's a lot of biles right there. Not quite hitting the magic marker there, just quite yet, but doing a good job overall. Getting those Immortals low, but the juggle is absolutely immaculate. Making it very difficult to get that one Immortal right there as the War Prism is stuck whopping in more Stalkers, but that means there's more Stalkers on the way. And that means there's gonna be more Zerg units needed to clean this up. A single Swarm Host here in the production tab. Probably a mistake. <laughs> Let's see how this happens. Alright, another Immortal does bite the dust now. If we just can get a ton of Zerglings there. I'm not sure if we have enough injections going down anymore at this point in time. Quick look. Yeah, I think all the Queens are starting to uh, try pile in on this fight. So, there's not a lot of injecting happening. Which means there's not a lot of larvae going around. And that makes it harder to make the actual counter that you need to make here. The Zerglings, of course, against these Stalkers. I want to really take a quick look here, guys. Yeah, there's just no injects whatsoever. Anywhere. Anywhere. There's no Queens injecting. There we go. Now, finally realizing he needs to get those Zerglings out. The Zerglings are the key units here to, to take on these Stalkers. And it's just not going to be able to be achieved here. It looks like the Stalkers just doing too much work. They are going to be able to push through. And there's gonna have to be a gg here right that's how are you supposed to bring this back being rogue there's a lot of roaches on the production tab 13 more but he's committed so much to the defense of this base right here he does not want to let it fall and maybe 
It was a bit too much committed to try and keep this base afloat. And I suppose, I, you know what? I don't blame him. Losing this base is quite that problematic situation since now he's uh, a three base Zerg with a similar army count when the Protoss is on four bases over here. Right, Roach is the final ditch effort there with the drones coming in. The budget Zerglings trying to just pretend like they weren't born a drone. Unfortunately, they don't nibble quite as hard. But, uh, quite a big difference there, of course, between being a drone and a, and a Zergling. So you don't have wings. Well, you do have wings, don't you? You do have wings, actually. What is the difference between drones and Zerglings? Are they just the same? Are they just... Is it just overall people putting labels onto things? Maybe it is. All right, moving on forwards. Rogue and parting here. Going head to head. Parting looking uh, looking pretty darn strong right now. Like he is kicking some serious batutes. Uh, already taking on innovation in a 3 to 1 fashion. And now being able to claim the first victory here against Rogue as well. Of course, that is off of the back of those uh, adepts doing quite a bit of worker damage right here. Would it have worked out the other otherwise? Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But then again, I mean, we don't have to go into the speculative. Because we know it did do a lot of damage. And uh, maybe, maybe we're going to see something else this time around. So, uh, we'll get to explore the two boys going head to head here a bit further. That did sound weird, right? The two boys exploring each other a bit further. It does. Yeah, all right. Let's scratch that entire sentence from your head. Pretend like I've never said that. Put me back into your previous overall well-respected caster library banks there and uh, pretend that never happens. All right. In the bottom right side, we got a blue Zerg player fighting for the Dragon Phoenix Gamers. Rogue. Mm, top left side of the red Brodos teamless right now. He is uh, parting. Going for a gateway. Thought for a moment he may be going for the cannon rush, but it is just solely here to block the hatchery from uh, being placed in a, a nice easy spot. Alright, mind that gas, rogue. That's right. Parting being a bit of a nuisance here. This third base being uh, being taken as the second base is of course always a bit of a bit of an awkward position here for Rogue. Um, I'm surprised he took the triangular one, this one over here, instead of the one a bit further to the top side. I suppose there is still a way for a war prism to move back and forth here, but the, the, the well the war prism harassment back and forth over here just a lot longer of a distance to walk for your defending units. Same could be said for the Oracle harassment, of course. So, I don't know. Maybe just felt like it was a little bit closer by. You could get that a bit quicker. That could be the case. It's an awkward, it's an awkward position anyway, right? Regardless of what you do, really. Eight Zerglings. That does seem like quite a couple of them. Coming in right now. Wants to shut down that probe. Does he keep those other Zerglings hidden? Does he try and keep those other Zerglings hidden? Yes, he will. We may very well see a Ling Flood coming in here, guys. This is a lot of Lings right now. Anticipating perhaps the Twilight Council build here from Parting. But Parting, instead of going for a Twilight Council, he just went straight up into the robotics facility. All right, we'll have to see how this is going to unfold here. This this could be interesting. Parting going to have a bit more stuff overall as uh, when compared to... Going for the Twilight Council and the Robotics Facility and the Adapt Glaive Upgrade, of course. So he has more materials to work with. 
but these Ling Floods can always still be quite bothersome. Can be hard to hold. You have to just have continuous... Um, well, ice everywhere to keep your buildings standing, to keep them afloat. Here we go. There's the Zerglings right now coming in. First and foremost, targeting down the gateway. That is still being warped in, so it's going to be a bit easier to take it down. The Stalker also under a lot of pressure here. He realized it had to give his life for Aya. It's what they kind of say, right, when they when they spawn. It's not entirely uh, a surprise that that is going to be the case here. Nice catch on that Adept. Should be able to get picked off rather quickly. The Zerglings get in. GG is called Rogue. Making things rather boring once again. <laughs> With a big cheese right there. Finds himself access into parting space. And that's what, what it, it means to get Link flooded right there by Rogue. Um, unfortunate. It was actually 4 minutes and 7 seconds long that game in total. A uh, bit of wood, so, you know what, close, but. <laughs> uh, GG's. Well played, well played. Hmm. Foul parting was going to be a lot better, position wise, after uh, not going for that Twilight Council there. Thought he may be okay. Soon that not to be the case. To be fair, Light Shade, very short distance, so those Zerglings, they arrive very quickly. Becomes more difficult to hold something like that, of course. So it's a smart, it's a smart choice of map for for Rogue to do something like that on the map like that, right? Being able to find his uh, his quick win, his quick victory, the quick dubs. I hate the word dubs. Like, I, I I don't know why. Ugh. the quick dubs. You know, yeah, he got the quick dubs, didn't he? Dubs. Guess it reminds me of dubstep, perhaps. Right? Just a thing that was cool for a moment, and then after a while, people just kind of stop listening to it entirely. I think that's going to happen to the word dubs as well. That's my prediction right there. Screw predicting the actual game. I'm going to predict things about the word dubs. Dubs, come on. Who needs the word dubs? Alright, so, top right side, Red Brodles. He is parting. There you go. Bottom left side, Dragon Phoenix Gamers. Rogue. So. <laughs> Dubs. <laughs> Imagine if Dragon Ball Z was called Dubby Dub Z. <laughs> Dubby. Dubby dub Z. Dubby dub dubs. Yeah, it wouldn't have been as popular, would it have? Would it would have been? Nah, I don't think so. Pro well, it still probably would have been pretty popular, but you would have been uh, you would have been bullied more heavily at school, I feel like. Saying like, oh yeah, I watch I watch a lot of the double dubs dubs. <laughs> uh, Alright. People would have been less uh, accepting overall. What's this actually? What's Barting doing? He is uh, he's being a bit of a cheeser himself right now. Throwing down that forge. He's going to start cannon rushing the high ground uh, fairly soon. Probe here coming in. He's like, oh no, I missed I missed my opportunity. Is, is he going to fake, fake the double fake with the cannon rush here? All right, no, he's coming in. He's coming in. He's like, oh yeah, I'll, if I'll do it, I'll do it here. Keep your attention on this location right here. That is the place you would do it, right? That is what makes sense. Bam! Suddenly a pylon right there. Broke comes back around. Rogue none the wiser. So far, completely in the dark. Doesn't have a uh, any anywhere even in his mind space right now that this is but even potentially going on. Couple of drones transferring. They don't see it. They don't know about it. Rogue there going into an awkward direction. That is going to trigger it. It's going to cause these Zerglings to come in. Try and help out. The cannon very well placed here. Parting really knows this cannon rush, doesn't he? It's a wonderfully placed cannon right there on the low ground. And then the high ground as well, right? Just barely being covered. Very cool stuff right here. Uh, what are these cannons really going to be able to do, though? Outside of just, uh, well, provide cover, I suppose, for a robo. 
Ooh, cannon. Ooh, nice cancel there from Rogue. Was able to force those cannons back onto the low ground. There we go. The Zerglings actually doing a bang of job. And now there's only a shield battery here with that pylon on the high ground. And I think the Queen should be able to pick up anything else that may or may not be uh, attempting to be built here. It's a very, very clean way of dealing with this here for Rogue. I thought he was going to be in trouble, but... Man, that was that was quite something else. A very clean hold here for the blue Zerg. Yes, yeah, the high ground vision is just going to go away here for parting. He's not giving up just quite yet. Still has shield batteries on the low ground. The immortal getting a bit feisty there. Needs to watch out. Metabolic boost about to finish up. Could have been the death of him, but manages to get back into the uh, the Protoss province right here on the on the low ground. There you go. And now the game is a boot. This is where it starts. I love this creep spread as well, by the way, from Rogue. Very important. Uh, did lose the spine crawler there. That's a bit, you know, unfortunate. Now, how's this going to go? There's only a single cannon here. Also, actually, is that only one pylon? Is this the biggest Artosis pylon we've ever seen? And it's not being targeted down. Well, no, wait, actually, there's one more here, right? There's two Atos of Pylons, I suppose. But then the shoe batteries, they do pretty darn good at keeping Pylons alive as well, to be fair. So never mind, never mind, guys. I was being a little bit silly. But that's a lot of links, though, right? That's a lot of links. The shoe batteries just kind of prolonging the inevitable here with the pier. There's only one single uh, Immortal and one single cannon right there. Is that another cannon? Oh, it's a Pylon. I thought that would have been fun, you know. But uh, well, no, good effort there by uh, by parting. But not gonna work out. Thought that it would, didn't quite do it. And GG is gold. Rogue gets game number two. That's the scary part. If you cheese the cheeser, that is, you know, that's his territory. That's his jam. He knows how to hold his own in those situations. There we go. Pillars of Gold, next map. Three, two, one. Should be starting. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Inu really knows what 321 means because in his head I feel like he's doing like okay 321 and then and then he actually starts counting in his head like okay 3 2 1 and then he clicks. Um he's just announcing the fact that he's doing a 321 countdown by saying uh, like 6 times 3 6 times 2 6 times the 1. It's hard to say. If the high ground cannon swapped in successfully, that would have been a different story. But the great hold nonetheless. Yeah, that was a clutch one, wasn't it? Jeez, those cannons, they got so close to finishing up. So close. All right, here we go. Let's get these scores on the boards because, well, these guys, they fought hard for these, uh, for these points. In the top right side, we got a blue Zerg. Fighting for the Dragon Phoenix Gamers, he is a rogue. Yeah, being invited to the Dragon Phoenix Gamers. Yeah, in-game it looks like. Anyway, bottom left side, the red Protoss, formerly from the Dragon Phoenix Gamers. Isn't this kind of a surprise? Because, in a way, it does appear like the Dragon Phoenix Gamers perhaps getting rid of parting in order to get themselves rogue. I'm not sure if that's true. It's just a coincidence. They kick parting and they accept Rogue on their roster. I mean, is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? I don't know, but it would be quite nice to see parting win this one, right? Even if you are a, a Rogue fan, in a way, you know, it would be it would be kind of funny to see. Anyway, regardless, enough speculating there, right there. That is not based on anything at all. Anything. Remember that. I'm just seeing somebody leaving a team and somebody joining a team. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes. Anyway, uh, bottom left side, Red Protoss, parting. Once again, getting that block on that hatchery. Ah, 
I like the colors in uh, Golden, well, Pillars of Gold, actually. It does seem like the lighting is just a little bit softer here, right? A little bit more gritty, as opposed to some of the other maps, like Submarine. It just seems like everything is a bit less saturated overall. It's nice, it's nice. It's not to the point where things become harder to see or differentiate from the, the ground or the surroundings. It's uh, it's some good overtones overall, yeah? A good, nice look and feel. Sorry, mate. Uh, the, uh, the painter inside of me suddenly coming out, of course. Truly, truly the Leo Caprio. No, wait, what, what's the <laughs> fuck? Uh, Leonardo, the uh, the Finchy of our day. Leonard, Leonard, the 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 Finchy. That's the one. Mister Leonard himself. All right. So, looks like there is a third base on the way. So I think we're okay for the Ling floods here. Bit of wood. Didn't see that the previous time. Assuming we're gonna get ourselves a game. I think we got ourselves a game on foot. Robo. Twilight. A dead glaive. Hmm? Yes, it is. All right. All righty. So, you know what? This is the game that, uh, well, well, the build order that got parting the victory the previous time. See if he will be able to achieve it once more. Get that worker damage again on the boards and then maybe just finish it off with a very strong push afterwards as we saw the previous time. Rogue doing a good job scouting here though. Having eyes everywhere. It's like Saruman with his flock of, uh, flock of birds. You can see they are flying unnaturally quickly in in weather that would not normally allow this to happen. Against the wind as well to boot. Sarogman. <laughs> Sarogman. Oh god. Man, it's a bad day for jokes today, isn't it? <laughs> oh. oh well. Common occurrence here. Anyway, here come the adepts. We have four gateways in total. That means four adepts joining in the fray every single time here. Rogue will have to keep note of this. Realize that this is uh, not just a adept pressure, of course. Still other stuff going behind the scenes uh, going on. Still droning up, or I mean probing up. Getting himself another base. There we go. The Zerglings do manage to get a all right surround, but the Adepts, of course. Oh my dear lord, a lot of them go down. Only a single Adept here into the main base. The other ones had to be picked up into the War Prism. The drones, they decide, you know what, we can ha handle this. No problem. Uh, four of them may be a bit much, though, of course. Not gonna work out there. Some Zergling counter aggression here coming in from Rogue. That is very cool to see as well, not just uh, sitting back with everything, over defending, is going to try to get something going here across the field as well. Meanwhile, that is that is quite a couple of adepts here. I think he may better just go for the, uh, the front door here than of the natural, that's exactly what he does. Let's see if he gets in. So, okay, no, there's a sentry behind this, just simply gets the stalker and gets the hacker away from there. Oh, this could be good. With two Biles there on top of those Adepts, that could be massive. There we go. Two of them immediately go down. Shield battery wasn't quite ready yet to help out with the defense. So that gets taken out as well. I think this should still be held quite reasonably well here by uh, parting. But oh, that, was, uh, that was some nice stuff there from Rogue as well, I'd have to say. Just two simple Ravagers joining in there and being able to do quite a bit of extra um, damage onto those adepts, right? The one reason why you never quite see Zerkings getting the kill on the third Nexus anymore. Um, and then just kind of throwing in something else there to potentially get something going in his favor. Not quite working out. Very well played there by Parting. 
kind of adjusting, uh, sending his stuff from the natural to the third base and holding that off with uh, absolute beautiful grace, uh, gracefulness. Like, a, you know, a StarCraft 2 player should. War Prism Harassment not finding too much overall at this point in time. Has been one of the main key pieces of uh, of Rogue's success so far. Being able to shut down Harassment. Great gratefulness. No, graceful. Gracefulness. Grace with uh, the C. Come on, Cynical. Come on. With great grace comes great ballerina ship. All right, that's what we're seeing Parting do here. Oh my bad. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's not good, dude. It would have been a weird sentence, but then again, I mean, it does sound like something I would say. Alright, I like this army composition with the uh, the Immortals and the Sentries. It's been kicking up again here. Used to be the staple play for a lot of uh, a lot of Protoss, of course, for a long time. And then just gonna move out at certain points. Get that, uh, that pain train on the road. Looks like that is going to be the case here as well. You do have that opportunity to do so, of course. The Sentries, not as powerful as they used to be with the Ravagers now in play as well. Uh, full shields a bit less secure, but still, still very, very solid unit composition here. And it's going to translate well into the uh, next uh, army composition, which is the logical progression of the Zerg here, right? Which would be the Lurkers. The Lurkers in the next step most of the time after the Roaches. Let's see how this happens, actually. Vials not quite being able to find their targets. This base is starting to get... Quite close to this, uh, to the Protoss army. We do see more injections taking place from that hatchery. So this is an absolute must now for Rogue to try and hold this off. He's actually injecting it instead of just using his transfuse. Which uh, seems weird. He just spent like five injects on that hatchery right there. Even though he was giving up on it. So interesting. Interesting stuff occurring there. Overall to Immortals now. Gonna try the harassments as well. It's not that much in the main base, actually. I don't think Rogue picked up on the fact that the War Prison went for the main. There we go. Now it's adjusting for it. Circling, finding the Starkers. Not quite uh, being able to find a lot of damage there either. Rogue gonna go for the counter attack. How many kills did we get so far? Only five worker kills in total. Not bad for, uh, for Rogue here, of course. But Rogue only on 62 workers, actually. Oh. It's not going to get this uh, base either, the fourth base. What about mining here? Yeah, also going into Parting's favor. Parting just seems to be in a really good spot here. Lost one of the Immortals, though. Bit sloppy. Still okay, though. Circling's coming around for round number two. The Stocks and the Zealots still there, ready to defend the area. There's another Robo and the Disruptor play coming in. Together with the extended Thermal Lance, really unlocking the uh, the powerhouse units here for the Protoss. As Rogue is starting to do the same here, but for the Zerg point of view, of course. Getting himself the Lurker Den. Some Vipers as well. Zerglings here coming in again as once more... Trying to find the real damage on that uh, on that Nexus here. But is that too much that he sent across the field? Is he still going to be able to hold his own against the Stalkers here? Massive miles actually there. Landing all right, but I don't think that's going to be enough here for Rogue. The Vipers flying into, it. well, absolutely uh, not so friendly fire. Getting blown out of the water here. And it looks like once again it... Just too much for Rogue to hold off. Barting again. Finds a lot of success here. We'll be able to clean up this base. Gets rid of a lot of the Ravages. A lot of the army supply of Rogue getting demolished. Pummeled. And Rogue here with uh, four Lurkers as the final line of defense. 
Not sure if that's going to be enough with, uh, well, no upgrades whatsoever for those Lurkers. The Stalkers just blinking straight into the main. No rest for the parting forces as they will absolutely demolish and exterminate the Zerg infestation here. It's not as much as the Golden Armada, but it's still pretty darn strong. GG, well played. Parting ties up the series. Once again, we're in a 2-2. Two -to -two. The game number four. Man, parting, parting, bringing it back, bringing up some wonderful plays here. Trying his, uh, you know, metal now versus, in a, well, not just innovation, but also rogue. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Lightshade, Romanticide, and Oxide still in the menu here, of course, guys. Let's see. Lightshade, another smaller map. Another smaller map. Protoss OP or Parting OP? Parting is doing a wonderful job with its execution here, not gonna lie. And Rogue, I mean, it felt like his work account just never really got to a good point there, right? So I, I think Rogue maybe just underestimated uh, how many how many drones or how much droning he had done. Sometimes that happens as a Zerg, right? Where you, there's a lot of stuff going on. You did a bit of harassment in the early parts that normally uh, you would have spent time using, well, to make more drones. Uh, we saw the quite a big of a Zergling flood with the Ravagers trying to deny the third base. That never happened. So maybe in that time period, Rogue kind of lost track of the exact amount of drones that he had. And never really got up to a very comfortable position there in that game. Never really got up to the, the nice place where Zerg likes to be in order to carry themselves into that late game. And um, yeah, it showed parting just an overwhelming amount of uh, stuff. Coming back to stuff again. Yeah. Top left side. There's a blue Zerg fighting for the Dragon Phoenix gamers. He is a rogue. Bottom right side. It's the red Brodos. He is parting. Is it just me or has Rogue not been doing good since he won the last year's Cell Championship? I mean, what would you consider as good? I mean, Parting's getting pretty darn high up in the GSL right now as well. And he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe against him. He beat Dream 3-1 to one earlier today as well. Oh, that's, that's rough. To be fair, the game that he did win here was with a bit of cheese. And then beating the cheese of, uh, of Parting. There we go. Parting doing a wonderful job so far. Denying access to that, uh, to that cannon right here. Well placed infrastructure. To make life difficult here for Rogue. Rogue already sending that drone across the map. This base most likely is going to have to be cancelled. Actually, the cannon not quite shooting it, but there's another cannon on the way. This base is going to have to be cancelled. It's going to have to make that elsewhere. There's no other way to do that, really. Drone gets into the main base. Wait a moment, he let it finish. Okay. I guess he just wants to get a couple more um, larvae there. Interesting. Okay, Hatchery does get spotted. Cybercore goes up. Hatchery is not going up. All the probes had to be pulled. Immediately makes another hatchery here. Denying a lot of mining, but still time is ticking. Things are getting a bit dicey here for the Zerg player. Zerglings not going to have an easy time leaving the base anymore. He's going to lose two Zerglings there as well. Alright. 
Let's see. Roxy Hatch not finding a lot of uh, a lot of luck so far. It's not going to be able to make it work this time around either. All right, just let's make it a gas deal then. Try to clean up the cannons this way with the zerglings and the drones, everything together. All hands on deck. That's not going to work. Parting will be able to take this game as well. It looks like GG. That's a difficult cannon rush to get yourself out of though. The proxy hatch not finding any real uh, real anything either. It's a rough one. Yeah, it's a rough one. Not quite sure. Yeah, I, I hmm. Maybe cancelling the other hatch so you, you're not really forced to try and take a fight there as the Zerg. Could be a way to do it. But uh, yeah, it's just that's just a rough patch of uh, of aggression right there. Parting with a wonderful cannon rush overall. Um, just doesn't seem like the same rogue. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he's been he's been looking back like the like the really strong rogue though lately. I think he's really been you know there's definitely been a bit of a downtime period, but I, I feel like he's getting back up there. I feel like he's in a good spot again. It's just parting parting. I mean he's been in a good spot as well, right? Parting also. He's not sitting still. He sort of plays also continuously improving. Upping that game and making it more difficult for the players on top to stay on top, right? I'm, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a hard case to really quantify, right? You, 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 hmm. Oh well. Anyway. Best is seven, and we got ourselves a three to two situation here. Rogue, this could be his last match. Needs to win this one. It's the blue Zerg. Already called him out. Dragon Phoenix Gamers, Rogue. Bottom right side, the red Brodos. He is parting. Void Ray rush now. Ooh, <laughs> parting. Who knows? Who knows with parting, right? It could just be another adept aggression as well, <laughs> honestly. He's not sending that probe out in time to really get the hatch block, though, so. Won't be a adept aggression, I would assume. Is my guess. But I've been wrong before. I was just trying to give a false sense of security here to the, uh, to the blue zerg. Faking the cannon rush here. Look at the mind game going on between these two. Looks like, no, you're not going to get this place. No, you're not. Get out of here. Get out of here, Mr. Probe. I mean, the time for a, a cannon rush pylon kind of already passed anyway, right? Doesn't seem to be the time anymore. Virgin drone, no match for the chat probe. Ah, <laughs> uh. uh, I mean, it is just those gosh darn shields, isn't it? It's not proxied, but it is a Stargate play here. So, Bitterwood, half a point. Half a point for you. Let's see if it's Void Race, and then, you know what, we'll give you... Half of another half a point. We put you on uh, three quarters of a point. 
Once you have the hundreds, uh, I'll come visit you. That's, that's the prize that you can win with a hundred points. Point system is completely arbitrary though. I can take away and give points at any point in time. No, nothing to say about it. It is Void Race here, so you know what? Three, uh, three quarters of a point for Bitterwood here. On the leaderboards. Unfortunately, he was still on a deficit, of course, of uh, three quarters of a point as well. So it puts him up back to a grand total of uh, zero points. Unfortunately. But, you know, it's, it's a good starting place again. Another Stargate being thrown down here. Gonna transition into the uh, into the Phoenix, it looks like. You'll get some channel points in exchange. Nice, thank you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Alright, Spore Crawlers coming in. Already starting to prepare here. Overlord speed as well. Necessary thing to try and keep those uh, those little mermen in the sky alive. The gas bags that are the overlords. Phoenixes now they have revealed themselves so far it doesn't look like Rogue fully understood the uh, the severity of the situation now he should know he's adding in more spore crawlers ready to start defending uh, this type of air aggression he's also got the lay attack on the way so let's see if he decides to go for the spire or for the hydralisk straight afterwards we do see the plus one out well sorry air weapons the ranged weapons coming in Crawler here, trying to save the day, trying to keep that uh, road wire in alive. Important structure here. Well, this is just awkward, isn't it? <laughs> the void ray continuously just kind of repositioning, targeting something else, and uh, forcing the spore crawlers to realign itself as well. The road wire, once again, open for taken. Open for business. That void ray not quite being able to shoot it just quite yet, but it's going to go for the main. The spine pool, the queen, guys, is gonna go for drums. Alright. There are two spore crawlers here, so that should be a lot of damage. Oh, a lot of workers have gone down just quite yet, only two of them, and a queen. The void ray goes down, though. Tucking down that overlord, not sure if that was worth that. I suppose he didn't lose any phoenixes, so sure. And there we go, there's the worker damage. Using a single phoenix overall, that's okay. It's alright, could have gone a lot worse. Could have gone a bit better, perhaps, but overall, he's, uh, he's put himself in a good worker account here, right? In comparison to Rogue. He's not letting Rogue run away. Just a ton of drones for the time being. This Hydralisk are getting made right now as well. They are being added into the army composition. By the way, something to note here, guys. I think we're going to see a big attack coming in for Rogue. I could be wrong, but look at this creep spread. It's just one single direct line towards uh, towards the base of Parting. Okay, he is getting Lurker then right now, so maybe that I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I thought maybe he's going to just try to move those Hydras into the, uh, the Brodal space as quickly as possible here. Seeing that creep spread right there, but... Is still going to try to play this out defensively. It would appear. Just this way of spreading the creep. Just in one straight line. <laughs> you better be 
careful. Oh, Overseer stays alive. That's nice. Phoenix harassment. You know what? Let's just do this. Let's just follow these Phoenix around. All right. I feel like this is the most important part anyway. We got storm completed. Please start moving again, Phoenixes. Phoenixes. Phoenix. All right. Well, never mind. Horrendous timing there from the from the observer. Don't know who is observing anyway. I'm casting, so it's not me, obviously. It's the hive tech now on the way as well. Needs to get those uh, upgrades for the locust here, of course. Oh, that's a big storm. Quite a bit of a hit on the chin there on those uh, on those circlings coming in immediately as well. Again with the phoenixes, looking to keep dealing the damage here. As we have carriers being constructed behind all of this. Parting, making uh, Rogue run back and forth between this place here. Making him, well, mostly the Hydra is probably a little bit dizzy overall. War Prism on the top right side, not gone noticed quite yet. Two Dropper Lords, where are those Dropper Lords? We'll try to find them for in after, of course, we see this. It's just doing an alright job here. The High Templar and the Zealots are gonna have a rough time trading here. I think the yeah, I think the Lurks and the Hydra should be able to get themselves a fair bit of damage, right? Good storms though. Great storms, in fact. Alright, doesn't look like that will be remedied for the time being, or at least the Nexus. It's like that it will be staying upright for the time being. Come on, guys. Finish up the fight. I want to see what is going on with those uh, with those two Drupal Lords. Oh, that's one. I guess they are just both here. They are both here. Interesting. Right. Push on the bottom side. Did get uh, knocked out. We'll not be getting rid of that Nexus for the time being. Would have been a great pick of that for, uh, for Rogue, of course. Maybe he's going to have a bit of a consolation prize here with that carrier. Gonna get close. Yeah, okay, he's giving up on the chase. Nice recall right there. Third base for Rogue now with the Zealot's aggression. Looks like that has been handled as well. Rogue's just gonna have to take another base here. The Lurker ranged upgrade is being constructed, of course. Also, we see three carriers at the same time being made over here. Rogue is not going to be able to just uh, make this work with pure Lurker Hydra alone. He's going to need something else. He's going to have to figure out that this is, in fact, as massive of a air transition here coming out of passing as it is. Right, now sees the good amount of those carriers. We need to start seeing either Infestus or we need to see the Vipers here coming into play. Alright, engaging the Nexus here once again. The Lynx trying to force those High Templar backwards with Adrenal Glands ready. We don't actually have Adrenal Glands ready. So that may be a good call, right? You, you do quite a bit of uh, quick damage with those Zerglings, but... Hmm. Alright, anyway, going for the Archon now as well, in fact. Not even going to get the Archon here. A lot of Lurkers here being made as well. A bit ambitious, if you ask me. And Rogue, is Rogue going to be able to deal with all these Interceptors? I, yeah, yeah, he is. Alright, so, yeah. Going to have to move backwards. You may actually get this base here. Is it because... Oh, the Dropper Lords coming into play, finally. Doing their thing, getting some locusts in all of these mineral lines, and that's causing parting to panic. Right now, those locusts and the hydras on the left side as well will be able to take out that base. Parting absolutely everything in disarray. He looked so calm and collected, and suddenly, four locusts, four locusts coming in through the back door, breaking everything apart. Everything just kind of getting scrambled like crazy here. Parting. He's going to have to dig deep. He's going to have to find somehow, some way to make this go back into his favor. Because right now, it's not looking very favorable. Plus two air weapons. That could be a big moment in time here. Of course, only 24 Hydras <coughs> in total available. So 
maybe with a good couple of storms and those uh, carriers as well dealing the damage continuously maybe this is going to be enough oh but the oh, oh, oh the zerglings once again getting on top of those high templar i don't know how they keep finding them but they definitely are continuously finding them all right the hydras it looks like they are getting uh, they are getting dusted but the carriers here may need a breaker a, a little bit of a a breather in order to get themselves those interceptors reacquired, remade. <clears throat> All right, here we go. That's a good amount of corruptors there with those hydras as well. Spores, spines, everything together coming out to play. The archons are a very crucial part of this army right now. They need to keep those uh, those corruptors honest. Otherwise, they will just get right on top of those carriers and shut them down immediately. So these big glowing orbs with their AoE splash damage. Incredibly important right now. The storms also need to be immaculate, I would say, against those Hydras. Will Parting be able to make this go his way? Here we go. The storms nowhere, anywhere near in sight. The Archons not quite finding the underbelly of those Corruptors. The Hydras getting rid of the Archons, the Storms, again, not finding anything here. And even if Parting does manage to get this base, that's not going to be enough, it feels like, with uh, Rogue still being one base ahead in total. Yeah, Parting has to go home, and that is the worst time to have to go home. This is such an abysmal moment for Parting having to make another base here. He really wants to win this game right now in order to prevent a game number seven. GG is called. Parting has to tap out. Rogue ties up the series once more into a 3-3 standing here. Okay. That means we're going to have one for all the marbles. Parting and Rogue, both of them showing quite a bit of finesse. Not only in the early little bits of micro wars, but also in the macro games. Both these players now being able to, uh, to claim some victories. I suppose Parting uh, trying to get the victory a little bit earlier overall not wanting to go the extreme late game but you know what that game it, it seemed like he wanted to but not quite working out in his favor could be because of those lurkers just dropping in from behind of course that is a probably a good reason why you do lose that one that's a lot of drones going down a lot of drones getting uh, getting slain overall all right so Regardless of what happens now, this will be the final uh, the final match for today, guys. So I, I hope you're strapped in. I hope you're ready. Because Rogue and Parting, I, I highly doubt that they're not going to give it their all. Unless if one of them is just uh, quite brave and it's going to go for a massive uh, wave of uh, aggression right here. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. What if it's a draw? Well, I don't believe in draws, all right? They are they are myth legends of old that we tell our children to, you know, get more more hype going in total. But it doesn't happen. They, they don't exist. They don't exist, guys. Any draw you've ever seen fabricated overall uh, it was already decided beforehand that it would become a draw. It never happens in a real game, guys. Come on. Come on. That would be, that would be the first time ever. That a draw happens in StarCraft 2. Since eternally. Like, well, not eternally, just forever, I suppose. Eternally. Is that the same as just saying forever? Feels different. Eternally kind of seems like there is still a finite amount of time involved, but uh, forever doesn't really, right? So, well, forever as well, actually. Forever also could implicate, right? There is a finite amount of time. Like, I could say I've not been outside of quarantine in forever right now, and people would understand that there was a time before quarantine, right? And it, it would still make sense. It would still be, I suppose, correct overall in the the English language. I don't know if the grammar kind of still works. Maybe we'll have some professors trying to come for us overall, but it feels like that is an accepted way right now by the masses to kind of use that term. Anyway, interesting. Game 
number seven. All right, this is where it's gonna go down in the top right side of Blue Zerg. He is playing for the Dragon Phoenix Gamers. He is a rogue. And did he or did he not take the spots of this man in the bottom left side? The Red Protoss. He is. Parting. There was a time before the quarantine, really? Yes, yes. Gather round, children, as I tell you about the the epic tales of whatever happens before quarantine. We would we would go outside and we would not require our chin diapers to be in front of our you know our mouths and nostrils. No, 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 no. We would just be having a good time together. We would shake hands as well, in fact. We would we would touch each other. Uh, with hands on the hands action. I know it sounds weird. It sounds a bit confusing right now. It sounds maybe a bit gross in fact, but That is what uh, what it used to be like and we would we would sit next to each other in movie theaters We would sit next to each other in uh, Sometimes a bit uncomfortable close proximity, but uh, you know what Ooh. Back to the drone, uh, the drone on probe action. But overall, you know what? It was uh, it was quite something else. It was quite something else. We would have parties. People would go to concerts. There were festivals where a million people would gather. Well, maybe not a million, but quite a couple of thousands of people would gather up and uh, sit in a big field of grass, listen to music being performed as everybody was getting drunk and touching each other as well, guys. That was actually something that was going on back in the day who knows who knows if we'll ever get back to the good old days <laughs> probably not uh i remember as well when when it was like only going on in china and i was making fun of it in streams um i'm getting depressed now man i mean sorry i'm putting this into too much of a just a well fuck fuck <laughs> kind of uh shitty shitty stuff overall isn't it yeah it really is i know um, it's, yeah, yeah, oh, it's been okay for the online casting community, though, right? That's me, hey, <laughs> ah, uh, I miss live concerts so much, yeah, dude, ah, uh, I was aiming, like, so many of my plans have fallen apart for this year, overall, it's just, like, ugh, a festival, a trip to Korea, a lot of stuff just kind of, kind of going sideways. Anyway, jeez, all right, this took a turn for the for the worst. All right, let's let's focus on the good things here. We still have Rogue and Parting fighting against one another, of course. Well, there would be less goes than that's true. That's true. Well, I would still be there. I just wouldn't be on the internet broadcasting and uh, talking complete and not uh, gibberish all the time. Alright, so, where are we going? Where are we going with this? Another Adept Glaive attack. Alright, well, so far, parting two for two with this build. Is he gonna make it three for three, or is this the one time where he should not have done it? We already have the Roach Run on the way here for Rogue. Looks like he should have all the tools in his cabinet to try and get rid of the, uh, rid of the aggressive attempt. Parting. Should be moving out momentarily. There we go. Already being spotted by that overlord. Rogue should know what's up. Knows what's up right now. Spotting moves on forwards. There's the first warp in. Debs once again being spotted. Good overlord placement is absolutely crucial in these moments. You need to know where those adepts are going. How many circlings do we have? We only have 14 circlings? Is he crazy? Has he lost his marbles? Alright, more circlings are coming in here slowly but surely. The Queen's doing a good job at softening up those uh, adepts right now. The Roach is also trying to get closer by so far. It's looking okay for Rogue here. He's doing alright. Can't let those shades leave the vicinity though of those circlings. The Roaches need to stick with the Queens here. Okay, cancelling that shade actually. You thought he could... Uh, let that shade finish there. The zerglings were not enough on top of those, uh, on top of those uh, depths, but it's still at the front door here. 
did manage to get as well two queens so far. Trading out already, actually. Only four adepts gone down overall. So army supply for Rogue here rather rapidly skyrocketing upwards. As parting, it seems that he is going to go for something else here entirely. No more adepts being warped in. The war prism still in the front uh, side of this space, though. But this is uh, zero kills so far on the workers. Circlings? They can try to tango with those uh, adepts. Not going to go for it this time, though. All right. So far, best response against the adept glaive so far, right? The least amount of damage being taken in this one. Cutting it close, though, of course. I mean, he is only on 50... Well, it's 51 works. Actually, yeah, it's pretty good. Guys, I'm sorry. I had this the wrong way around. Oh, nobody noticed. Don't send that to any of the real casters and the, the big boy casters. That <laughs> he will make a mincemeat out of me. Jeez. All right, so... Um... Yeah, the trades were okay there for uh, for parting, right? And they definitely were. They definitely were. So, there is a chance that he will be able to get some work done. I mean, we've seen the Sentry Immortal uh, aggression coming through here a couple of times already with the Adept. Now, that was off of the back of dealing more damage. But, I mean, he looks pretty darn good anyway with the Adept uh, kind of Sentry Immortal armies. So, who knows? Who's getting Blink, actually? Hmm. Just be a little bit of a trap play, trying to deny a fourth base here. Interesting. All right, shading towards that third. The third, finally, some drones are losing their lives here. Oh, good surround with those links, though. Just in the nick of time, being uh, there to deny the passageway blockage of the Adept. Well done, well done. Still seven workers. Ain't too bad, but it's very late in the game here. Still on 70 workers right now, and Rogue's gonna have to feel comfortable with that amount. Would like to see him try and take a fourth base here as well. Maybe anticipating an attack coming in from parting here. I mean, that is what's been going on, so maybe it's the right call not to go for that, uh, for that extra 300 investment into the economy here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look, guys. This could be a very, very decisive moment. It's so only two Immortals, only three Sentries. It's not that much. But then again, Rogue doesn't have too much himself either. He's got a good Concave here though. Let's see how the Force Fields land. They definitely are doing an okay job at keeping a lot of the units of Rogue here outside of the battle. Not enough Biles. It seems like to break down these barriers. Going for the Biles, uh, the Biles anyway on front of the uh, main army. Instead of going for the Force Fields. Not that many force fields remaining. The Biles there. Oh, they are landing for sure. Drones are being pulled off as well. Queens are here. The Roaches, the Ravagers. We need to see some more Zerglings joining in the fray as well. I would assume, right? That would be the right way to kind of combat this army. They die a little bit quicker, but they do quite well against those Stalkers. Especially in high numbers. Here we go, the Biles need to start landing as well. Rogue, is he stabilizing the supplies here? Not looking too bad for him overall. Did lose you? Actually, he only lost one worker with that worker pool. That is quite impressive. Oh, Hydralisk are on the way, guys. That is going to be a massive uptick in the power spike here for Rogue. He just needs to not lose too many units here until he has the extra firepower from the Hydras. Barting's going to have to try his best to try and target those downs. Um, get the victory that way. More Stalkers just continuously being warped in. The Blink Micro here. Absolutely wonderful. Rogue trying to figure out if he was or was not supposed to move in there. After most of those Stalkers using their Blink. You have a bit of a time, right? Where there's no Blink available. So if you take the fight then. Uh, the Herd Stalkers won't be able to Micro themselves backwards as easily. Oh my god, already Lurkus actually. Lurkus are going to put an end to this. Parting already taking a fourth base as well behind this. Can't believe that Rogue actually getting himself a Lurker then. Getting the Lurker upgrades as well with this. 
as this battle is still raging, as parting still at this front doorstep, making life difficult. Trying to get those Starkers on top of the Lurkers here. That is a crucial thing to have happen. Let's see the range of these Lurkers right here. All right, did manage to split up those Starkers. It's going to be hard, a lot harder to push in here. That must be the end of the overall uh, Starker aggression, at least on this side. It's going to try to go on the right side right now. There is a base on the way there for Rogue as well. Of course, Barting not much to fall back onto. Was quite committed with this attack right here. Getting the kill on that fourth would be pretty alright as well, of course. There we go. Alright. Is he gonna get it? Yes, he will. No cancel there. That's 300 minerals in the trash can right now. Another lurker getting slain. The stalkers, they are desperately trying to micro their little uh, stalker hearts out. But Ooh, there we go. That's a good one. Picking off another one of the lurkers. Lurker ranged has been upgraded, though, for a while now. There's the, uh, the lurker speed burrow and unburrow is coming in as well. Man, I mean, the stalkers, they are still going ham here, guys. Can't believe how much work Barting is being able to get done with just these Stalkers, actually. It's quite the crazy game. Now jumping into the main base here. Forcing, once again, the Lurkers out of position and into a whole different area of, uh, of battle. Just moving backwards, the Blink Stalkers. They are incredibly mobile, being able to just skedaddle, skadoodle. Blink like a noodle. And Rogue is running after the facts here. I feel like just Hydras may have been even better than the Lurkers right now because, I mean, the, the Lurkers, they are just, they're just being bullied. Blink Stalkers, I mean, sometimes people say Blink Stalkers, they could very well be the answer against the Lurkers. And I think, I think right now, Parting putting up a really good case for that. Here we go. Oh, those Stalkers, they do get biled a little bit, raining on the parade, but... I mean, there's still so many of them. Army supply getting closer and closer together here. Parting, I mean, he is on full bases right now. He's trading out very efficiently as well. Is this going to be it here? Is Parting going to be able to beat Rogue in a best of seven? Is it going to happen? Those, jeez oh, Louise, it's not just, you just, look at that. It's crazy just jumping on those Lurkers the moment when they unburrow. Absolutely mental. Oh, the Starkers, of course, having a rougher time now to fall with the retreat, but they took out so many of those Lurkers here. Zerglings coming in as well. They are perhaps the one potential threat here now for these Starkers, but there's only seven of them. You need a lot more of those uh, Zerglings to really pose a threat against your uh, <laughs> against this ball of Starkers here. Nice concave being set up by those Starkers on top of the ramp here in the main base of Rogue once again. I feel like we are reaching the point of no return. A couple of vials landing. Only one actually on the war prison. So that could put a dent as well into the uh, overall harassment and the tempo here for Barting. Barting, my dear god, he is going absolutely ham. He has disruptors now as well. A fourth base was created still for Rogue, so he's no longer stuck on the three base, but a fifth base going up for Parting. As he is getting more weapon upgrades, he's getting himself that high attack tree unlocked as well. Together with the Zealot Charge coming in. Disruptor looking for any potential victims right now. Looking to see what he can get. Stark is on the left side now as well, shutting down that base. multi pronged aggression here. Parting. Running a lot of... Uh, a lot of momentum. Okay, the stocks on the left side are being slain. So it is back to just the one stalker ball. That would have been ridiculous. If he was able to blink those stalkers on two locations at the same time, that would have been nuts. Quite the nutty thing indeed. Alright, some Zerglings here not finding much of anything either. The Starkers back into the main base. The Biles not quite finding the success that they're looking for. Disruptor. Um, in a bit of a hiatus as well. Okay, it, it does seem like the momentum the Starkers were building up has collapsed in on itself. 
No longer are we seeing these stalkers really carry the fight as well as they used to. The Hydras actually also are really helping out with this, of course. They are an incredible source of DPS. More and more lurkers are being constructed as well. We have four available right now. Two more on the way. There we go. Another disruptor shot on this ramp area. Ooh, just barely not getting the damage there. But he's losing stalkers. He's losing stalkers rapidly now, it seems. He is still mining more, though. He may still be okay. It's getting scary, though. Scarier and scarier. I would love to see Adrenal Glands actually coming in here for Rogue. Only Disruptors, only Blink Stalkers here from parting. Surprised he didn't send more stuff to this left base actually as well. It's only just uh, some, some Overlords there, but the Overlords, the initial one already scouting this out. That is going to be a big Disruptor. Oh my god, that is massive. The Locust, though, is still denying the Stalkers access, though, to the, uh, well, to the middle area right here. More units coming into Locust, trying their best to keep the peace for the drones. A good job, Stalkers, again into the main base. Are you kidding me? He's absolutely everywhere, parting. Maybe he's on doing once more, though. This is what happens against Innovation as well, remember? Trying to finish off his opponents when he was just incapable of finishing off his opponents. He is really trying, though. He's putting in a lot of effort. Getting another cancel on that Disruptor there, or the, uh, the Lurker. This base struggling to really mine efficiently here. It's parting out on the five bases. Again, one base ahead. Rogue has been... At an economic deficit throughout this game, continuously. Still holding on though, somehow, some way. With, with, but with more and more disruptors coming in, as well as the storm upgrade, I am starting to worry here. Feel like this could be a um, decisive moment here for Rogi. I then need to start securing another base. Stop bleeding here. Or he needs to start getting damage done across the map himself. And Barting is just not letting him have any rest whatsoever. Losing a couple of those Stalkers here, though. More Zealots running in towards that other base. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's uh, the opposite of what you want to see happen. All right. Oh, that's a lot of disruptors, actually. The disruptors completely blindsided right there, trying to make a run back home, and all of them getting caught out. There's only a single disruptor now left on the map. Those stalkers here on the right side, not quite being able to find anything either. The lurkers and the two hydras here. The remainder of what just slew those disruptors. Oh, man, that was a rough one. Still, though, of course, parting... I, I, Still with an economic advantage here. Some DTs casting a bit of a stir as well, but there are the Overseer uh, Vision granting units. They are going to make it a bit easier. Parting again, though, in the main base. At some point, this is going to have to be a decisive, you know, move overall, but it seems like Rogue somehow, someway is dealing with it continuously. 30 army supply remains here. 64 for Rogue. Rogue has been behind on the economy <laughs> throughout this game. I don't know how many times I can point that out because it just keeps surprising me every time I think about it. And he is still in this. Managed to get a kill on that base right there on the, uh, the 9 o'clock. Another base on the bottom side being constructed though by parting. He's not giving up whatsoever. But it does seem like the Stalker army has run its course. He needs to get something else going. Because the Hydra, Ling, and Lurker just deal so well with those Stalker units. Parting. Colossi would be good. More Disruptors overall. The Storm, of course. Something, anything, really. Disruptors. I mean, they are. They can be really good against the Hydras. They just have a rougher time against the Zerglings and the Hydras together. Uh, 
All right, Rogue. My dear God, how is he still in this game? How, guys? How is this possible? I guess it is again here, Barting trying to finish off an opponent where he really doesn't have to. Trying to bank it all on this Micra and finishing it off that way. Now again, another base here under a lot of threat, under a lot of pressure. He's going to try to make a counter move here on the left side, but already a defense has been assimilated here by Rogue. Realizing this is coming in here. Oh, that's a nice disruptor shot, but still a lot of lurkers here ready to defend. A couple of DTs trying to do a bit of harassment as well. The Nexus here did get slain, but the probes are still alive. DTs into the main base. Let's see if they get some important tech structures like, well, I don't know, a hive perhaps. More disruptors on the way. The DTs do get thwarted, do get pushed backwards here. As Parting is re-establishing his location here in the middle. And be able to catch Rogue mid-transition with a couple of disruptor orbs. Similar as what happens with the Lurkers finding a ton of disruptors. All of a sudden, oh, that is a denial on that disruptor shot right there. Rogue, great target firing. Once again, keeping everything alive. Losing his spawning pool, though. And again, having some pressure on that uh, hive tech right here. Does not want to lose that, of course. It's going to kind of slow him down a little bit here, I would assume. Oh, my God. There's just so many lurkers everywhere right now. Parting never did manage to get that uh, anywhere. Like, I mean... Any type of transition going. An air transition would have been good. Some Colossi added into the mix. Perhaps, maybe. They aren't that great against Lurkers, but... They would have done a bit better at cleaning up the Zerglings. Trying to get on top of his Stalker and uh, Disruptor army. How many Lurkers do we have right now? 11. 11 Lurkers. Are you kidding me? It feels like we have 25 of them. They are just moving back and forth so quickly, continuously here by Rogue. Look at that positioning. Very, very cool stuff. Okay, another kill on the base right here. Creep spread. Not in time to deny that uh, Nexus from going down. Another Nexus on the 9 o'clock being re-established. Parting, reclaiming the entire side of, his, uh, of the map here. I mean, this is just ridiculous, right? This is just absolutely ludicrous. Rogue. I mean, this is all the mining he's got going for himself right now. He needs to have this base. Let's take a look at the Unis Lost tab. It's not even like he has a, an incredible win trade overall, yeah? Or cost efficiency. It's just... I don't know. Hmm. Well, he's being more efficient against the Protoss. And normally that is not supposed to be the case. Oh, Lucas here could get themselves in a good position. They definitely do. Three disruptors here, and those Lucas are quite clumped up. Nice spread out with those uh, with those stalkers. That's the disruptor shorts. Ooh, finding some nice bullseyes there. Oh, looks from the back as well, though. Oh, that is abysmal. All the disruptors getting got and uh, getting themselves into too much trouble than they can handle for the time being. Lurkus now trying to deal with the cannons a bit. Too much Brodos, though. Gateway forces here ready to stop the moving forward. There's also an attack on the right side here, actually. The DT still doing a good job. Uh, denying the mining here. Remember, this is the one mining base that Rogue has got going for himself. The base over here as well, though, also getting destroyed. So this is pretty much parting's only base that <laughs> mining is going on. Stuff is going ham. Absolutely everywhere. The base over here, it's less important now, but those drones, they are incredibly viable. Only 19, 18 drones right now in a 25-minute game. That is... Looking rather dire. Perhaps Barting is able to bring himself back. 
from the clutches of the feet there, being able to get another hatchery here. My dear lord, what are we seeing? What is this? It's going back and forth continuously. These guys going tit for tat. Parting still ahead economically though, but it didn't seem to matter for the longest time period. Oh, this base being established though for Rogue, that is of the utmost importance. Being able to get rid of this base as well, also very, very important. But of course, parting just a bit more mining going on here. Still a very solid work account as where uh, we have Rogue here struggling to have a fully mining one single base. Let's see, the army supply telling a very convincing story here. Has Rogue fallen finally to the power of the Blink Stalker Micro? It looks like that very well may be the case. Parting coming in here. Does not want this base to mine any longer. The drones are being pulled. And that is the final moment. GG is called. Parting takes it. Oh my god. What a show. What a man. What a match. What a game.